Welcome to the Open Dental webinar on some of the recently added imaging module features. Today we'll look at how to view multiple images on the screen, how to create a mount and add text to it, how to capture images, how to rearrange images on a mount, how to add lines and text to x-rays, and how to calibrate and measure lines on an x-ray. Please keep in mind an active registration key is required to use the acquire or video buttons within the imaging module. First, we'll go over how to view multiple images on the screen simultaneously. To begin, select your first image, click the title bar, and drag it to the side. This undocks the image from the imaging module. Select the next image, click the title bar, and repeat the process. In this way, we can view multiple images simultaneously on the screen. We can also designate a specific area of the screen to display the image by clicking the Windows button in the top right of our title bar. From here, I can select where on this screen I would like my image to display, where on my other screen I would like my image to display. I also have some other options on this menu. I can choose Dock This to redock the image in my imaging module. I can select the title bar and drag to undock the image again. I can select Close Others to close all other open images aside from the one I have selected. Or I can choose Show All to open any minimized images. Finally, at the bottom, we have a list of all of the open image files, and I can select one to pull it to the front. Next, let's look at how to create a mount. A mount is used when taking multiple images or radiographs. To create a new mount, go to the main menu to Setup, Imaging, and Mounts. You'll see a list of your existing mounts, and you can double-click into one to edit, or you can click Add to create a new mount. You can start with one of our pre-built templates, a completely blank mount, or begin with a photo grid. Let's create a 2 by 2 photo grid with items that have a width and height of 1500 pixels. Clicking Generate will create our mount definition. Within the mount definition, I can edit the description, which changes the name for our mount. I can set a default category where I would like this mount to be placed when it's generated. Let's have this one go into the photo grids category. I can edit the width and height of my mount. Let's set the width to 4000 to make room for another item. I can also set the background color of the mount, as well as the default color for text and lines, and the text background color. I can also choose to make the background of the text transparent. Looking at our other options here, I can flip on Acquire, which automatically mirrors the image upon acquisition. Use Adjust Mode after Series, allows us to automatically enter adjust mode in the imaging module instead of pan mode after acquiring images into this mount. Adjust mode allows adjusting an image slightly within its mount position or the ability to move the image to a completely different mount position. Pan mode repositions the entire mount on the screen. Our measurement scale will be used when measuring lines on this mount, and we'll go into more detail on how to calibrate this scale in a few minutes. Clicking Generate will allow us to replace this mount definition with a completely new one. And I can use the item order to reorder the items on my mount. I can select an item and use the up and down, error, up and down arrows to change its position. Or I can click Reorder All, which sets the item order to zero for all of my items. And then I can click through my items in sequence to number them. We can also click Add Item to create a new image item on our mount. This creates a new item, which I can then click and drag to the desired position. To edit an item in the template, we can double click into that item. X and Y determines the position of the item on the mount definition. Width and height adjust the dimensions of our item. Let's change its width to 1000 pixels so it fits on our mount. 
Rotate degrees when acquire allows us to set a value for automatic rotation of our item when it's acquired into this mount. Valid values are 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. Tooth numbers can be used to indicate the tooth number that's usually associated with this item. And I also have the option to turn this item into a text box by entering something into the text to show field. This is how we can add text to a mount. Items with text in the text to show box cannot also be used to display an image. It is purely a text field. We can free type text into this box, or we can use replacement fields. Adding replacement fields will automatically fill information from our database. Let's add the description of the mount, the date of the mount, and the first and last name of our patient. Last, I can choose a font size for my text to display. This is measured in pixels, pixels so you'll want to start with a large number. Let's go with 50. Clicking OK saves our item. And I can click OK once more to save our new mount definition. Now we'll go over how to capture one or more images using a radiography sensor or intraoral camera or webcam. Please note an active registration key is required to use the acquire or video buttons within the imaging module. To capture images with an intraoral camera or webcam, click the video button on the imaging module toolbar. On the video capture window, select the intraoral camera or webcam from the camera drop-down menu. You'll see a live feed from the selected camera. Click capture or hit the space bar to capture a still image. If a mount is selected, the image will go into the mount. If a single image is taken, the image will save depending on the imaging preferences for default image categories. If a default category for video capture is set in the imaging preferences, the image is saved to that default category. If no default category for video capture is set, then the image will save to the selected imaging category. If no imaging category is selected, then the image will save to the default image category set in the imaging preferences. And if there is no default image category, then the image will save to the topmost imaging category. To capture an image with an existing radiography sensor, click the Mount Acquire button on the Imaging Module toolbar. To acquire a single item, select the device and click Acquire. The image will be added to the selected imaging category. If no category is selected, it will go into the default image category set in the imaging preferences. And if there is no default image category set, it will save to the topmost image category. To acquire a series of images, select the desired mount and device and click Create Mount and Acquire. The mount will be added to the default imaging category set up on the mount definition and images will be added to the mount. If no default category was set, the mount will go into the selected imaging category and if no imaging category is selected, it will go into the top imaging category. Once we've captured images to our mount, it is now possible to rearrange those images. To rearrange images on a mount, we can select our first image and click Unmount. The unmounted images will be displayed in the unmounted section that appears at the bottom of the imaging module. We can unmount multiple images at once. To remount an image, select an open spot on the mount, select our image, and click Remount. It's also possible to delete an image from our mount by selecting the image and clicking Unmount. We can then select the image again and click Delete. Next, we'll go over how to add and measure lines on an X-ray. We'll need to start with some one-time setup so we can calibrate the scale for our measurements. 
To begin, import, a measure, import an image where you already know the measurement of a line. Click draw, and then click line, and draw on our line of known length. Click edit points, and then you can click and drag the line to make it more closely follow the curve. Once we're satisfied with our line, click Set Scale and immediately hit Cancel. Click on our line, and the length of our line in pixels will populate automatically. Enter the known length, and click Calculate, and the pixels per unit will populate. You'll want to copy that number of pixels per unit, because we'll need this later for our mount definitions. If you know the units, you can also enter those. We measured our line in millimeters. With my pixels per unit copied, I'll now enter that into the scale on each of my mount definitions. To do this, go to Setup, Imaging, and Mounts. You'll then double click into your mount. Paste our scale in pixels per unit over under the measurement scale box. You can also optionally enter the number of decimal places you would like to display, as well as the unit you would like to have displayed on the measurement. You'll need to do this individually for each of your mount definitions. Once we've set the scale, we can measure the length of lines drawn onto our images. Select the mount and acquire your images into a mount where we have set the scale. Once you've acquired your images, click Draw and Line, and draw the line you'd like to measure. Again, we can use edit points to make our line follow a curve. Once we're happy with our line, we can click Measure and select the line. The measurement will appear on our image, and from the edit text window, we can edit the text that will display on our image, its X and Y position on the image, as well as the font size, the text color, and its background color. We can also choose to make the background of our text transparent. We can also set a default scale for use with single images, meaning images that are not attached to a mount. To do this, we can go to Setup, Preferences, and down to Imaging General. Here, we can set a default measurement scale, including our decimal places and our optional units. This will be the default scale used on individual images. Now let's take a look at some of the other features on the Draw Toolbar. To open the Draw Toolbar, select an image and click the Draw button. On our Draw Toolbar, we can click Color to set the default color for lines and text on our X-ray, as well as a default background color, or I can choose to make the background transparent. To add text to the X-ray, I can click the text button and then click where on my image I would like my text to display. I can edit what I would like the text to read, as well as its X and Y positions on my image. I can change the font size, the text color, and its background color. I can also make the background transparent. I can also move my text around the image by clicking and dragging. The pen button allows us to freehand draw on our image. And as we saw earlier, clicking line allows us to draw a straight line onto our image. When line is selected, there are additional options that appear. Edit points allows us to click and drag the points of our line, allowing it to follow a curve. Measure allows us to measure the length of our line when a scale has been set and clicking Set Scale allows us to view or edit the scale. Our Eraser button allows us to erase lines or text on the image. 
and I can also click Change Color to change the color of existing lines or text. To do this, I'll select my color button, select a new color for my text, we'll make the background transparent this time, then I can click Change Color and select my text or line. It now changes the text and background color to match my currently selected color option. Clicking Close closes our Draw toolbar. The final feature we'll look at today is a new setting for our imaging categories. It is now possible to display image files as thumbnails. To set an imaging category to display thumbnails, go to Setup, Definitions, and Imaging Categories. Here we can select the imaging category that we want to show thumbnails, and then select the box for Show Thumbnails. Please note, only files in an image format can be displayed as thumbnails. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And make sure you're staying up to date with our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.